and welcome to another edition of Bizline here on VTV International. I'm Huang Hang, and as usual, we'll begin with some economic highlights over the past week. <music> A conference on Vietnam-Japan trade promotion was held on July the 1st in Tokyo, attended by Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc, speaking before over a thousand enterprises from Vietnam and Japan. Prime Minister Phúc mentioned over 70% of all Japanese enterprises want to expand their investments in Vietnam, according to Jet Trail statistics. Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc and Japanese Minister of State for Regional Revitalization Satsuki Katayama witnessed the exchange of cooperation agreements between VNPT, Petrolimex, Vina Lines, Vinsem and Japanese partners on IT solutions for Yong Mo, Vietnam, maritime logistic and environmentally friendly cement production. 32 projects worth 8.3 billion US dollars have already received licenses, of which two-thirds will be implemented in Hanoi. The government should enhance macroeconomy stability to strengthen the national economy in case any problems arise. This was discussed at a meeting of the National Financial and Monetary Policy Advisory Council on July the 2nd under the chair of Deputy Prime Minister Vung Ninh Huệ. The council's members pointed out that growth-driven sectors like agriculture, industry and services had slower growth rate than in 2018. Exports went down and public-private partnerships and private invested projects had to cope with several obstacles. They suggested the government to continue to closely follow trade and investment developments around the world to stabilize the macroeconomy while reinforcing the internal elements so they can deal with external impacts. This will help facilitate trade and control trade fraud. The U.S. Commerce Department said on July the 2nd it would impose duties of up to 456% on certain steel produced in South Korea and Taiwan, China that are then shipped to Vietnam for minor processing and finally exported to the United States. The duties on South Korean and Taiwanese products were imposed in December 2015 and February 2016. Since those dates through to April 2019, shipments of corrosion-resistant steel products and coal roll steel from Vietnam to the United States has increased by 332% and 916% respectively compared with similar periods immediately before, the statement said. CPI growth after a three-year low during the first half of 2019 has greatly helped stabilize the macroeconomy and has promoted economic growth. It leaves a lot of room for inflation control for the remainder of the year. This is according to Deputy Prime Minister Vung Ninh Huệ at a meeting of the Steering Committee for Price Management in Hanoi on July the 3rd. The Consumer Price Index or CPI in June fell by 0.09% from the previous month. During the first six months, it grew by 2.64% compared to the same period last year, far below the ceiling rate of 4% which had been set by the National Assembly. Deputy Prime Minister Vung Ninh Huệ asked ministries, sectors and localities to provide information about price management to relevant agencies, the media and the public in a timely fashion. Vietnam's Index of Industrial Production or IIP recorded a year-on-year -year rise of 9.13% in the first six months of this year, according to the General Statistics Office's latest report. The processing and manufacturing sector, which accounts for nearly 80% of the domestic industrial production, reported the strong IIP increase of 11.2%. Meanwhile, the IIP growth of electricity production and distribution stood at 10.6% and that of water supply and waste sewage treatment sector and mining sector reached 7.8% and 1.8% respectively. 
From January to June, a number of localities posted significant growth in IIP, including Haiphong City with 25% and three other provinces of Guangning, Vĩnh Phúc and Hải Dương with 14%, 13% and 10% respectively. Those are some highlights in our economic scene in the country. Up next in our crosstalk, we will take a look at the significance of the newly signed EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement or EVFTA for both the Vietnamese and EU businesses. The EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement or EVFTA and the EU-Vietnam Investment Protection Agreement EVIPA recently signed in Hanoi on June the 30th, are considered comprehensive, high-quality and well-balanced agreements for both sides. With this trade deal, tariffs on nearly 100% of Vietnam's export to the EU will be eliminated within a short period of time, while offering more opportunities for European enterprises to access the Vietnamese market with their rights and interests protected. The signing of the agreements affirmed the shared interests of Vietnam and the EU in promoting international economic connectivity, trade liberalisation and balance, transparent and rule-based investment. Our Bees Line this week will take a look at the significance of the agreements and the efforts made by both sides to reach them. But first, let's review the historic moment when the agreements were signed in Hanoi last Sunday. After seven years of negotiations, the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement or EVFTA and the EU-Vietnam Investment Protection Agreement or EVIPA were finally signed in Hanoi on June the 30th. Speaking at the signing ceremony, Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc emphasized the significance of the two agreements in becoming stepping stones for greater engagement between Europe and Vietnam. Sự liên kết tổng hòa các hiệp định quan trọng này sẽ nâng cánh quan hệ Việt Nam và EU lên tầm cao mới mang tính chiến lược. Trong bối cảnh chủ nghĩa bảo hộ đang nổi lên, các thách thức an ninh phi truyền thống cần lớn, thương mại toàn cầu đối mặt với nhiều khó khăn, sự hợp tác hai bên và ký hiệp định hôm nay mang ý nghĩa đặc biệt thể hiện tư duy mạnh mẽ, tầm nhìn chiến lược của cả Việt Nam và EU là hai nền kinh tế mang tính bổ sung cho nhau, cùng hợp tác cùng có lợi và cùng phát triển hướng về tương lai tươi sáng, đóng góp cho sự phát triển bền vững và cho hòa bình, ổn định và phát triển. Earlier in December 2015, Vietnam and the EU concluded negotiations on EVFTA. On June the 26th, 2018, the EVFTA was split into two agreements, one on trade and one on investment. Later on June the 25th this year, the European Council officially adopted the decision to allow the European Commission to sign the two agreements with Vietnam. This is the EU's final decision on signing these free trade agreements with a partner country before ending its 2014 to 2019 term. I had a chance to sit down with Eurocharm co-chairman Nicolas Audier to discuss the significance of this trade deal for both the Vietnamese and EU business communities. Let's take a look. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Um, the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement or EVFTA was finally signed after a long process of negotiation in which the Investment Protection Agreement or IPA was separated from the initial free trade agreement. So what do you have to say about the journey to finalize these agreements? Eurocham has been has been working on this uh, on this EVFTA for basically more than 10 years. Uh, even we started with the day one, the day one of the negotiation for the EVFTA. Long journey, long process, uh, many, many issues we had to be, to be faced, including the splitting of the free trade agreement in two agreements, so the, the FTA per se and then the IPA, the other agreement. This FTA is a very comprehensive agreement, so it covers not only trade and investment, but covers many, many areas of the society in Vietnam. So this is why it's a difficult agreement. This, uh, 
uh, it's not only selling EU product to Vietnam or Vietnamese product to, to Europe or to invest more in Vietnam or invest more in the, in the, uh, in the EU. We have to ensure that the basic right, right of, the, um, of, of the party will be protected. Um, you may remember that one of the issues was actually the uh, uh, ILO Convention, International Labour Organization uh, issue, and the uh, EU wanted to ensure that the right of the uh, worker will be protected. So that has any, any uh, delay in the, in the process of um, signing the FTA. Why is it necessary to separate the IPA from the EVFTA? Very good question. It started actually when the negotiation started, you have only one agreement, one agreement. Uh, but you may, you may see the precedent of other FTA that uh, EU have signed in the past. And, um, and, uh, and because we have the IPA, and because, and because we have the IPA, we have to go through the parliament, to the national parliament. And in one example, the national parliament uh, of one of the EU country are just veto, mm -hmm. and they have veto the IPA, which has also veto the FTA, mm -hmm. and we didn't want it to happen for the Vietnam. Mm -hmm. The good thing of that, when the FTA is signed, we just need the approval of the Parliament in Europe and, of course, the Parliament in Vietnam. That's it. Mm -hmm. Will be applicable. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not the national Parliament of each of the EU country agree or not agree, it will be applicable. It is said that Vietnam has shown great efforts in negotiating these agreements. So what is your take on Vietnam's effort and its level of commitment in this process? I've, I've been working and, and living in Vietnam since uh, 1993 and, uh, and I've, uh, I was lucky enough to uh, also with Eurocharm and also so the French Chamber of Commerce to work on the WTO a while ago. Uh, you may remember that when Vietnam joined WTO, it was already a great event for, for Vietnam. So then I, I saw the team which was established for the EU-Vietnam FTA and, and many of the uh, negotiators for the WTO were also uh, there for the EVFTA. So the team, the Vietnamese team is of course outstanding. Eurocham has been working with the Vietnamese delegation and, and we have seen that the competence of the Vietnamese team, team is highly uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, good. And this is why we had a good agreement. No discrimination between Vietnamese or EU investors. Free movement of capital and profits in and out of territories. Vietnam and the EU are committed to two provisions under the EU Vietnam Investment Protection Agreement or EVIPA. The agreement is considered a shield to complete the investment ecosystem of the EU and Vietnam and ensure fairness among investors. A survey of EU investors at the recent Vietnam Business Forum showed that they feel more secure as the EVIPA was signed. We've just this year already made a significant investment that is more than double what we had invested already. So we've just built a second. I mean, we expect to be here for 50 years and beyond. It is supposed to create what we consider an improvement of a necessary ecosystem to make uh, the country, the economy and all of us uh, grow all together. Vietnam is our house in Asia. Recently there's been a lot of interest from European SMEs. Open uh, uh, environment in, uh, in Vietnam coming from the FTA. Um, they have the courage now to knock at the door to uh, see if uh, there is room for them. The EVIPA also solves the problem of losing investments through nationalization, which is the transfer of control and ownership of major private assets to the state. Không trưng thu và quốc kỳ hóa trái pháp luật hoặc là đảm bảo đền bù thỏa đáng trong trường hợp chúng ta là trưng trưng thu quốc kỳ hóa cái tài sản và của 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 nhà đầu tư EU. Cái thứ hai là đối với về cái cái cam kết về về giải quyết tranh chấp đầu tư thì đặc biệt nó có một cơ chế là mới. According to the EVIPA, investors are allowed to speak up in front of the host country's government when disputes arise. If the dispute cannot be resolved through negotiation and mediation, a council with members of both the EU and Vietnam will be established. Their rulings are legally binding and countries' courts have no say in their decision.
Vietnam is the second country after Singapore that has a free trade agreement with the European Union. So what is the significance of this for both the EU and Vietnam? It's a very good sign for Vietnam because now Viet Vietnam uh, uh, shows uh, to, to Europe, to the global, global uh, planet that Vietnam is open economy, fully open to uh, develop country to, to uh, uh, OECD countries to European markets so it's a very good sign for foreign direct investment good sign for anyone who wanted to do business in Vietnam so not only EU company but all investors they know that Vietnam has committed to have a strong high level of commitment so it's a good sign uh, given to, to all of us um, as you see uh, in, your, in Vietnam in uh, ASEAN you have only Singapore and, uh, and Vietnam. I understand other countries are now willing to, to, to take the step. Uh, so among the ASEAN countries, only Singapore and Vietnam has an agreement, um, which will have a double impact for, for uh, each of the uh, parties. One, when they invest in Vietnam, they will benefit from the FTA, and because they are in Vietnam, they will benefit from the ASEAN, ASEAN Economic com uh, uh, com uh, Community. And, and many uh, foreign investors will come to Vietnam and to benefit from the EVFTA. What benefits do you think the EVFTA will bring to both sides? Of course, uh, on the economic point of view, foreign direct investment point of view, trade, the volume of trade, the volume of service, a lot. So Vietnam will export much more in Europe and Europe will increase uh, its foreign direct investment in Vietnam and to some extent also increase its capacity to sell product in Vietnam. But it's more for Eurocham, for, for us, it's, it's more than trade and investment. Um, Vietnam make a commitment to reach a high level, high level of, of standard, which is the standard of the EU, which is uh, in Europe, we have a market of 500 million people. The standard is very high. Uh, we have a strong court system. We have a lot of standard protection of the consumer, protection of, of the uh, environment, people are concerned by the climate change, so many issues. And we know that in ASEAN, uh, uh, Vietnam also will at some point reach the level we have in, uh, in, in Europe. So it's not only trade and services, it's also what, what we call the fair trade. Shrimp is one of Vietnam's key seafood export products to the EU market. Tariffs of Vietnamese shrimp exported to the EU were eliminated after the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement was signed. This company's shrimp export turnover reaches 30 million US dollars every year. It is expects to increase its exports thanks to the EVFTA. Hàng năm thì cái thị phần của chúng tôi vào châu Âu nó chiếm khoảng 20 đến 30 phần trăm và sau khi cái hiệp định này nó ký kết thì nhưng nó ảnh hưởng một cách từ từ thì chúng tôi đặt cái mục tiêu nó sẽ dao động từ 30 đến 40 phần trăm. The EVFTA will eliminate almost all tariffs for goods traded between Vietnam and the EU's 28 member countries over a seven-year period. Vietnamese products such as textiles, footwear, agriculture, and fishery products will have more opportunities to export to the EU market. According to the Ministry of Planning and Investment, Vietnam's export turnover to the EU will rise by 20 to 40 percent thanks to this agreement. However, the challenge for Vietnamese enterprises is to ensure product quality and origins. Some of the rules in the agreement, rules of origin, for example, for the textile and footwear industry, are very strict. And Vietnam will need to source locally if it wants to benefit from the preferential arrangements. The Ministry of Planning and Investment estimates that the agreement will have increased Vietnam's GDP by around 2 to 3.2 percent from now until 2023 and by over 7 percent by 2033. What preparation should Vietnamese businesses make in order to fully benefit from the incentives of these agreements? Vietnam is exporting 30-35 billion euro of product to Europe and Europe export 10 billion of products. So it means that already the Vietnamese enterprise in Vietnam, they know how to export in, uh, in, in Europe. So 
uh, they just need to go more often to Europe, to participate to conference, to uh, a meeting, to show, just to promote the Vietnamese product, to promote the Vietnamese economy and to develop a, a long-term and sustainable uh, um, uh, trade between Europe. Um, now the only main issue will, will be for the SMEs, for the small and medium Vietnamese enterprise, because obviously uh, it's more difficult for them uh, to travel and to come to Europe and develop their business, so they will have to do through the VCCI. Mm -hmm. This morning I had a, a discussion with Dr. Locke, uh, chairman of VCCI, and of course we need to, to do uh, to, to work on a kind of roadmap to ensure that the Vietnamese SMEs and big Vietnamese enterprises will be able to come to the EU market. But I, I've seen some big Vietnamese enterprises are now investing in Europe, so it's a good sign, good sign. Um, but now we have to make sure that the SMEs as well. Mm -hmm. So VCCI, Eurocham could be also one of the uh, channel uh, to help and to assist the Vietnamese enterprise to come to, uh, to Europe. As chairman of Eurocham, how do EU businesses receive this news? That's excellent news. I mean, we have been uh, Eurocham has been working on the uh, on the agreement for more than ten years. Uh, Eurocham has uh, fifteen executive members. Uh, at your charm and all of them has been working hard. Um, we had uh, three hearings at the Parliament in Brussels, three hearings at the International Trade Committee in Brussels, uh, and I went with many of my colleagues from, from the board, and of course all extremely happy. Uh, the only thing that we could, we could have is that the FTA could have been signed maybe much earlier. <laughs> But it's fine, we're well, very happy of that, very happy of that. Now we just miss, we, we cannot miss now the next uh, target will be the parliament. So now uh, at UHM we need to ensure that the uh, agenda will include uh, the EVFTA. Uh, so we plan with uh, colleagues, some colleagues of the board to come again to Brussels to, to advocate for Vietnam. Now that the EVFTA has been signed, Vietnam will officially consider the European Union as a unified country that Vietnam has a partnership with, rather than with individual countries. This is certainly an advantage for European businesses. The EVFTA allows for a 99% tariff reduction for Vietnamese goods imported into France and vice versa. Therefore. For French exporters, the signing of this agreement is a positive sign. In terms of investment, Vietnam's commitment to creating favorable conditions for French businesses to invest in Vietnam is a very good foundation for the future. The capacity of Vietnamese enterprises plays a very important role for German investors because they always need competent domestic suppliers and businesses partners, as well as well-trained and qualified employees, especially in the manufacturing industry. We propose to the Vietnamese government to develop a vocational training model that involves a large amount of practice and apply it across the country. There are currently more than 3,000 European investment projects in Vietnam. So what benefits will these projects receive and how will they contribute to Vietnam, their investment destination after the EVFTA take effect? All of our members uh, at Eurocham, they always invest in Vietnam with their own value. Uh, we, we have in, in, in Europe, so already they are contributing a lot, again, not only in trade and of goods and trade of services, but also what we call the fair trade, um, promoting, helping employees, uh, they have a very good social poli policy for the workers. So already they are contributing a, a lot uh, for Vietnam, for the development of the Vietnamese employees, uh, of helping the Vietnamese to, to develop an industry in Vietnam. So the FTA will simply be, uh, 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 will help to continue. When the FTA will be uh, implemented, hopefully if we can reach uh, the session of the Parliament in Europe, uh, July, September, and the same for Vietnam. So we anticipate it will be implemented by January 1st, 2020, and we have an immediate benefit for uh, EU enterprise coming to Vietnam. So including uh, the pharma industry, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, in Europe, we have a fantastic, uh, innovative uh, uh, research on, on, the, on the pharma industry, and of course, uh, this is what we would like to promote in, in Vietnam. Same for the auto industry. So it will have a direct impact as soon as it is implemented. Although uh, some product will benefit from the custom free uh, some years after the launching of the implementation date, uh, uh, but within seven years from the uh, um, uh, um, implementation that date, 100% of the product shall be custom free. How will the EVFTA impact the quality and quantity of European capital inflows coming into Vietnam in the coming time? At QHM, we anticipate, based on, on the questionnaire we sent to our members, based on our discussion we had in Brussels, in Brussels we met a lot of uh, uh, inv uh, investors willing to invest in Vietnam. So I think it will have a direct impact on the flow of foreign direct investment in Vietnam. Um, Vietnam will be in the agenda now, the agenda of many uh, uh, EU companies. Vietnam signed a free trade agreement with the EU, so it's a good sign, it's a good commitment for Vietnam. So I anticipate we'll have more uh, FDI, more foreign direct investment in Vietnam, including direct investment from SMEs from Europe. So it will, have a, it will be an immediate uh, effect. As to the volume of trade, I think the volume of, we think, we believe at Eurocham that the volume of trade between Europe uh, to Vietnam will not increase as much as the volume of trade between Vietnam to Europe. Uh, as you know, now we have an unbalanced trade between Europe and Vietnam. The balance, we believe it will still be unequal, but the gap, will not be as much as it is now. What are your forecasts of high quality capital inflow coming into Vietnam and what would be the area of focus for European businesses? So, and you will have good high quality for indirect investment. Um, because again, uh, when these uh, EU enterprise are investing in Vietnam, they come and invest with their own value, which we have in Europe. In Europe, we are very concerned by uh, the court system, very concerned by ethical rules, very concerned by the protection of the consumer, very concerned by the climate change. So any foreign direct enterprise, when they are investing in Europe, they bring their uh, uh, standard. For example, one of the uh, 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 impact of the uh, Paris uh, climate change was protection of the environment. So uh, when you will see, let's say, a company which is involved in the chemical industry, when they will invest in Vietnam, obviously, obviously they will come with their own uh, or their standard we have in Europe for Vietnam. What is your message to the Vietnamese business community after the EVFTA is signed? So a message I would like to, to, to convey to, to the Vietnamese enterprise, to the SMEs, to the big entrepreneur, that the door in Europe is open. So come invest, trade, do business, and also uh, 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 open, uh, open, open your country to uh, investment from Europe and trade from Europe. So it's, uh, it's fantastic opportunities. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. As a new free trade agreement FTA with the deepest integration levels ever, the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement or EVFTA provides new driving forces for the Vietnam-EU partnership. However, unlocking the full benefits and opportunities from this deal is not easy. Participating countries can reduce tax rates but raise non-tariff barriers and take more stringent controls, requiring enterprises to meet higher standards on quality, food safety, environmental protection, energy saving and others. Therefore, experts believe enterprises should actively learn the key information about EVFTA and Vietnam's commitments, particularly on tariff incentives, product quality, origin of goods and strive to better themselves while developing new strategies and solutions to building brands and creating high value products capable of competing with imported goods. And that's it for this edition of Beesline. 